right now. Hmm. Omar, you could right now. Right. Okay, good afternoon, class begins. Uh, I found uh, only nine students attend the online class. And uh, uh, <clears throat> we begin our class now. Last time, we talked about uh, the performance of the basic Aloha uh, protocol. We talk about the pure Aloha and the slotted Aloha. And I analyze the, the performance with this figure, with this figure. Impure Aloha frames are transmitted at completely arbitrary times. While in the snorted Aloha, 
while in the snorted aloha, we assumed the frames only be transmitted at the beginning of the uh, snorted at the beginning of a new snorted uh, time. And uh, this is the relation relation between of of the traffic for uh, Aloha system. This is the curve of pure Aloha. This is the snorted Aloha. The maximum throughput occurs at uh, at this point. In other words, the best we can hope, the best we can hope for is a channel utilization of 18%. Then <coughs> snorted, about the snorted aloha, we, we know that the best we can hope for uh, using snorted aloha is the double of the Pure, pure aloha. It is thirty-seven percent of the snorts empty, and thirty-seven percent successes, and twenty-six percent conditions. Anyway, the performance of the snorted aloha is thirty-seven percent. It doubles the performance of pure aloha. Then we will talk about uh, CSMA protocol. Mean it means a carrier sense multiple access protocol. Uh, with not the aloha, the best channel utilization that can be achieved is the one over e with stations transmitting at well without knowing what the other stations are doing. There are bound to be many conditions. In local area network, however, it is often possible for stations to detect what other stations are doing and thus adapt their behavior accordingly. So it can be Use the to help improve, help to improve the performance further. So, these networks can achieve a much better utilization than 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 the one of snorted aloha. So, snorted aloha is better than pure aloha, and the CSMA of local area network is better than snorted aloha. So CSMA in of LAN better than snorted aloha, better than pure aloha. So protocols in which stations listen for a carrier, listen for a carrier, and act accordingly are called carrier sense protocols. That means here, that means hearing behavior. A station before, before transmitting its frame, the stations can listen to the channel, listen to the channel to determine whether there is any station, other stations is transmitting. That means carrier sense protocols. A number of them have been proposed and they were long ago analyzed in detail. And uh, the first type is uh, one persistent, one persistent. Here one is the probability. Here persistent means how will the how 
does the station deal with when the channel is busy? Wait or or stop carrying. So when a station has data to send, it first listens to the channel to see if anyone else is transmitting at that moment. That means carrier sense. When a station has data to send, first listen to the channel to see if anyone else is transmitting at that moment. So if the channel is idle, If the channel is idle, the station sends its data, sends its data. Otherwise, if the channel is busy, that means there is the other stations is transmitting at that moment. So if the channel is idle, then the station sends its data. If the channel is busy, is busy. The station just wait. Just wait. Wait. How long time for the station will wait until it becomes idle? That means persistent, right? The station is persistent. The station is persistent. If the channel is busy, the station just waits until it becomes idle. That is the meaning of the air persistent, right? So then the station transmits until the channel becomes idle. At that moment, the station transmits a frame. If a condition occurs, if a condition occurs, that means uh, unfortunately, there are two stations are transmitting at the same time. The station waits for waits a random amount of time, a random amount of time, and starts all over again. Starts all over again. The protocol is called persistent because the station transmits with a probability of one. Here, one is a probability. Probability. What's the meaning of the probability? That means if the channel becomes idle, the station transmits a frame immediately, definitely, immediately and definitely. That means probability of one, right? If the channel is busy, if the channel is idle, the station transmits a frame immediately with the probability of one definitely transmits a frame if the channel is busy okay if it is not a one but a p persistent p persistent p persistent what is the meaning if two stations become ready in the middle of a third station's transmission, both will wait politely until the transmission ends. And then both will begin transmitting exactly simultaneously, right? That is the assumption. Assumption. If two stations become ready in the middle of the third station's transmission, then both of them wait politely until transmissions end. And both will begin transmitting exactly at the same moment, right? Resulting, it results in a condition. If they were not so impatient, even they were not so impatient, there would be fewer conditions. So how to improve the performance of the protocol? We can make the stations, we can make 
improve the protocol to make the stations not so impatient, not so impatient. So more subtly, the propagation delay has an important effect on conditions. There is a chance that just after a station begins sending, another station will come ready to send and sends the channel. If the first station, if the first station's signal has not yet reached the second one, then the latter, the second one's second station will send an idle channel right because if there is the, the it is the only assumption assumption if this first station's signal has not yet reached the, the second one the latter will sense an idle channel the, the latter here to the channel and find the channel is idle. Why? Because the signal has not yet reached. So it will also begin sending. That means the latter, the second one, will also begin sending. Then what, ha what will happen? Resulting in a condition. Resulting in condition. That means first point means if this is first point is there is two machines they send exactly simultaneous exactly simultaneous send there is a, a condition right the point point two says. If one machine send first, if one machine send first, but the first station's signal has not yet reached the second one, then the second one, second machine hear the channel and know the status of the channel is idle because the signal has not reached the second one. So the second uh, machine sends the sends a idle channel. Also, also the channel is busy now, but the first station's signal has not reached to the second one. So the second one only know the channel is idle. So under this protocol, the second machine send a frame also, send a, also send a, a frame, right? also begin sending. So we will there is a condition here. So so simultaneously or one first is both results in a condition. So this chance depends on the number of frames that fit on the channel or the bandwidth delay product of the channel. That, let us know that uh, there must be much, uh, must be many conditions in the channel. It will reduce the performance of the channel.
how to improve the performance, then probably we can make the the stations non-persistent. A station sends the channel when it wants to send a frame. And if no one else is ascending, the station begins doing so itself. However, if the channel is already in use, the station does not continuously sense. That means that is the meaning of non-persistent, right? So if the channel is already in use, the station does not continuously sense it for the purpose of seizing it immediately upon detecting the end of the previous transmission. Instead, it wants a, a random period of time and then repeats the algorithm. So a station sends the channel when it wants to send a frame. If no one else is sending, that means the channel is idle. Then the channel is idle. If the channel is idle, the station begins transmitting immediately, immediately. If the channel is already in use, is busy, the station does not continuously sense it. Instead, it waits a random period of time and then repeat the algorithm. So, Non-persistent means if the channel is busy, does not continuously sense. Instead, waits a random period of time and then repeats the algorithm. Repeats the algorithm means repeat random a period after a random period of time, the station begin to hear to the channel, sense the channel, right? Consequently, this algorithm needs to better channel utilization, need to better performance, but longer delays, longer delays than one persistent CSMA. One persistent Persistent here, non-persistent means one non-persistent, right? One, one, probability of one and non-persistent. That means if the idle channel is idle, transmits immediately with the probability of one. If the channel is busy, not continuously in a sense. So it's one. So one non-persistent CSMA is better than one persistent. One persistent. Why one persistent is worse than non-persistent? Because one persistent has two shortcomings, right? If two stations being transmitting exactly simultaneously or the first signal has not reached the second one. Okay, 
Then we will talk about the P persistence. P persistence is one persistence, right? One persistence. One non persistence or non persistence. Here is P persistence CSMA. That means if the channel is idle, the station will transmit with the probability of P, not one. The persistent means if the channel is busy, the, uh, the station will continuous, continually trans, uh, carry a sense, continuous, continually sense the channel, right? So P persistent, P persistent, when the uh, applies to snort the channel works as follows. When a station becomes ready to send, it sends the channel. If the channel is idle, if the channel is idle, the station transmits definitely and immediately or with the probability that is different, right? So under P persistent the CSMA protocol, if the channel is idle, the station transmits with a probability P. With a probability Q, Q is one minus P. It differs until the next snot. If that snot is also idle. It's either transmits or differ again, differ. Denied to the next snot, right? With probabilities P and Q respectively. This process is repeated until either the frame has been transmitted or another station has begun transmitting. In the latter keys, the unlucky station acts as if there had been a condition. For example, it waits a random time and starts again. If the station initially senses that the channel is busy, it waits until the next snort and applies the above algorithm. If the channel is busy, continually to continually sense the channel until the next snort. That means that's just the meaning of persistent, right? Uh, I triple E eight zero two dot one one uses this uh, refinement of P persistent CSMA that we will discuss in the next uh, section. P or persistence or non persistence. I think it, it, they are the arguments, they are the arguments, design arguments of the CSMA protocol. How do we design a program or a sentence execute with a probability P? We can render, we, we can generate a we can generate generate a random right word. For example, we we can generate a a random between zero and one, right? 
A four. If P if P is less than or equal to P zero, then then send right then send okay we generate a random between zero and one and if this p is less or equal p zero then send otherwise not send so here this protocol is p0 persistent right p0 persistent it is a p0 persistent right if the p0 if if p0 is 1.1 a 0.1 it is a 0.1 persistent if it is a 0 0.1 0 0.01 or 0 0.001 we can get 0 0.01 persistent right that is if p if this uh, random less than p0 send so we can design a program to execute with the probability right it's very easy and interesting. This uh, figure four, figure four shows the computed throughput. Versus uh, offered traffic for all three protocols as well as the pure and the slotted Aloha. Here we know pure aloha, snorted aloha, right? Pure aloha, right? Snorted aloha. One persistent, one persistent CSMA here is P is, is one, P is one, right? P persistent and 0 0.5 persistent and 0 0.1 persistent uh, 0 0.01 persistent and uh, this is uh, non persistent which one is better from this figure we know it is uh, it is the best right with p is a very small value p is a very small value or this one or this one non-persistent is better than the others right so this with a very small p or non persistent the boost can help to improve the performance 
of the channel. It is for the stations to quickly detect the condition and abruptly stop transmitting. Let's quickly detect the condition and abruptly stop transmitting rather than continue to finish them. So if the, if the stations detect the condition, then the best method is to stop the transmitting, not to continue to transmit. So rather than finishing them, since they are irretrievable, irretrievable garbled anyway, right? Since there is a condition, so all the frames, all the frames are connected, irretrievably garbled anyway. So the best way to deal with is to stop transmitting. This strategy saves the time and the bandwidth. So this is CSMA with the condition detection here. Condition detection to improve the performance of CSMA. CSMA, we should deal with the condition. CSMA CD is the basis of the classic Ethernet local area network. Since we have talked about CSMA before uh, of this uh, section, uh, the station's hardware. The station's hardware must listen to the channel while it is uh, transmitting. Uh, if the signal is raised back, it's different from the single signal it's putting out. It knows that a condition is occurring. Station's hardware must listen to the channel while it is transmitting. That means uh, a station is is seeing and hearing is seeing and hearing so if the signal is raised back is different from the signal is putting out it knows that a condition is occurring the implementation the implications are that a received signal must not be tiny compared to the transmitted signal. And that the modulation must be chosen to allow conditions to be detected. But uh, unfortunately, in the wireless environment, it is difficult as because Received signals may be maybe one hundred, uh, maybe once, one million times weaker than weaker than transmitted signals, and if the a condition of two zero voltage signals may well be impossible to detect. So under this, uh, under wireless environment or exactly two zero voltage signal signals between two voltage signals, the condition is impossible to detect. 
Now we will analyze the performance of CSMA CD protocol. Uh, this figure, figure five, assumes this uh, conceptual model. Conceptual model. Conceptual model says here is uh, at the end of a frame, at the end of a frame, we assume it is the time point T0. And after a contention period, one station sees the channel and will transmit its frame successfully. Then finished, when finished the transmitting, it will turn to the, the second term to contention of the, the channel, right? So we can analyze from T0 to the end of a frame. This is a period. This is a turn, right? This is a turn. And from the contention snores to the end of a frame, successfully frame, is a turn, right? So this is a turn. This is a turn. So we, how can we calculate the utilization? In this term, we can determine the performance by the utilization with the norm, the period of time of frame transmitting, right? Divided by the whole time of this term, right? We can determine the performance. Use this time, transmitting time, divided by the whole. But how, how long is the contention period? If we know the contention period, the, the question will become very easy, right? So at the point, at the point marked T0, at the point mark the T0 here, right? T0 here. A station has finished the transmitting its frame. We assume a station has finished this frame. Any other station having a frame to send may now attempt to do so. That means any other stations can contend to seize the channel content to transmitting their frames to the channel. So if two or more stations decide to transmit simultaneously, there will be a condition, right? If a station detects a condition, it aborts its transmission with a random period of time and then tries again, it tries again. Therefore, the model, this model, right? The T0 contention period with several contention slots, then we follow with a successful frame transmitting. Therefore, the model for CSMA CD will consist of alternating contention and transmission periods with idle periods occurring when all stations are quiet. Now, let us look at the detail of the contention algorithm. Suppose that two stations both begin transmitting 
at exactly time t0. That is, unfortunately, right? Both of two constellations face a condition. How long will it take them to realize that they have collided? How long will it take, take them to realize they have collided? The answer is vital to determine the length of the contention period and hence what the delay and the throughput will be. So the key, the key is to determine the length of the contention period. So we hope the length of the contention period is as short as possible. Then it can improve the utilization as, as much as possible. So hence, what the delay and the throughput will be. Then we, we will continue uh, to talk uh, these questions uh, after 10 minutes. Let's have a rest for 10 minutes. Okay, please uh, keep connection. Uh, let's rest, have a rest for 10 minutes.
Okay, let's continue. Let's continue. Turn back to the online class. Let's turn back to online class. So now let's look at the details of the contention uh, algorithm. Suppose that two stations both begin transmitting at uh, exactly time t0. How long will it take them to realize that they have collided? The answer is vital to determine the length of the contention period. Consider the following worst case scenario. So usually when we analyze the performance of a system, we consider the worst case scenario. We consider the worst case scenario because the worst case scenario makes the makes the basis of the performance makes the basis of the performance that means the the average performance will be better than the the one of the than that of the worst scenario right so net the time for a signal to propagate between the two furthest stations be tall. So that is from one end, we denoted with A, right? For the other end, we denoted B, right? So that the time for a signal to propagate between the two furthest stations A and B, that means the propagation delay will be tall. Tall. Usually pronounced with tall. Here, tall, right? Tall. The propagation delay between the two furthest stations be tall. At T0, at T0, one station begins transmitting. At T0 plus tall, okay, at the T0, one station begins transmitting. Then T T0, then T0 plus tall, the signal will arrive at B, right? If one station begins transmitting at T0, and the, the furthest propagation delay, the propagation, the propagation delay between the two furthest stations is tall, then at T0 plus tall, the signal will arrive at B, right? But now we assumed at T0 plus tall minus epsilon. Here epsilon is very, is very small, but larger than zero, right? An instant, an instant before the signal arrive at the most distant station. That is the meaning why minus tall, right? Since T0 plus tall, the signal will arrive at B. But now minus epsilon, that means an instant before the signal arrive at the most distant station that station also begins transmitting. Since minus epsilon, that is 
before the signal arrive at the most distant. That means the signal does not arrive at B at that moment. So the furthest solution B sends the sends a an idle channel or a busy channel. B sends a idle channel because the signal does not arrive at B at that moment, at this moment, right? So of course, it detects the condition almost instantly and stops. But uh, the little noise burst caused by the condition does not come back. The, the little noise burst caused by the condition, caused by this condition, does not reach, come back, does not. Go back to the original station. Until time two tall minus epsilon, right? Because tall minus tall plus tall plus tall, right? So the it will take. The time two tall minus epsilon. The station to for the station to sense a collision. In other words, in the worst case, a station cannot be sure that it has seized the channel until it has transmitted for two tall without hearing a condition. Do you understand? In the worst case, a station cannot be sure, cannot be sure that here two tall minus epsilon. Epsilon is larger than zero, but epsilon. Is unlimitedly to the zero. So the station cannot be sure that it has seized the channel until it has transmitted for too tall without hearing a condition. Based on this analysis, then we can think of CSMA CD contention as a snorted Aloha system with a snort width of too tall. For example, on the one kilometer long coaxial cable, tall is approximately equal to five mil seconds. Why tall is uh, approximately five mil seconds? Because we, we know tall is, tall is the length of the channel, right? Then the, the longest distance between the the distance between the furthest two stations that is the long length of the channel. One kilometer, right? Air. Air divided by dividend uh, air divided by what? divided by the propagation speed of the 
electromagnetic, right? So air is one kilo, one kilometer, one kilometer. So one kilo, kilo, thousand, right? One thousand. The propagation speed of the electromagnetic we assumed two times two times eight with the power of eight. Here the unit is m meter. Here the unit is speed is meter per second, right? So can get five mu seconds. Here one mu, mu, here mu is ten with the power of minus six mu. So five times ten with the power of two uh, uh, minus six second. So the difference for CSMA CD compared to snorted the uh, aloha is that uh, snores in which only one station transmits are followed by the rest of a frame. For example, in which the channel is seized, are followed by the rest of the frame. This, dis this difference will greatly improve performance if the frame time is much longer than the propagation time. It's much longer than the propagation time. That the it will greatly improve the performance. Why? Why the frame time? Why if the frame time is much longer than the propagation time, it will improve the performance? The frame time is longer, the performance is greater. Why? For example, this is a channel, channel A, uh, station A and B. If the frames is longer, the propagation is tall, right? Propagation time is tall. If the frame time is longer, that means A is transmitting a frame to B. When the first bit of the frame arrive at B, the remaining of bits of the frame has much is awaiting to be transmitted. That means at this time, at this during this period, there is no condition. The channel will be continually will be continually transmitting the frame without any conditions without any condition so if the frame time is much longer then the proof will be improved much the performance will be improved so Anyway, the frame time is longer, the less condition, the less, uh, the fewer conditions, the fewer conditions, the higher performance, right? So just now we talk about, uh, um, Pure aloha, snorted aloha, uh, one persistent, non-persistent, P persistent, 
CSMA and CSMA with cognition detection. CSMA with cognition detection. And here we are talking about uh, cognition free protocols. Since cognition will reduce the performance, cognitions will reduce the performance. Can we design cognition free protocols? Also, cognition does not occur with CSMA CD once a station has unambiguously captured the channel. They can still occur during the contention period, right? Because the conditions cannot be avoided. Also, we have also we have a carrier sense, right? So, condition detection should be added to the CSMA CD protocol. These conditions adversely affect the system performance, uh, especially when the bandwidth delay product is large, such as when the cable is long and the frames are short. So if the cable is long, but the frame is short, then this condition, conditions affect the system performance dramatically. Not only do conditions reduce bandwidth, but they make the time to send a frame variable. Variable means sometimes very high, sometimes very low. This is make the time to send the frame variable, not constant. So not constant not stable, so variable, which is not a good fit for real-time traffic, such as voice over IP, such as voice over IP. We know voice over IP or digital voice, digital voice communication need real-time transmission. But uh, this scenario is not good for good fit for this kind of application. So CSMACD is also not universally applicable. It's not universally applicable. That is, is the reason why. Besides CSMA CD protocols, researchers continue to design other protocols, such as uh, condition free uh, protocols and other protocols. So, uh, some protocols uh, resolve the contention for the channel without any contentions at all not even during the contention period. Most of these protocols are not currently used in major systems, but in the rapidly changing field, having some protocols with excellent properties available for future systems is often a good thing. In the protocols to be described, we assume that there are exactly n stations, each programmed with a unique address from zero to n minus one, minus one, n minus one. 
Uh, it does not matter that some stations may be interactive, inactive part of the time. We also assume that propagation delay is negligible. It's so, so small. Uh, negligible, not propagation delay is negligible. It's not small. Right? The basic question remains, which station gets the channel after a successful transmission? Which station gets the channel after a successful transmission? Why we have this question? Because the, the local aerial network is a contention system. It's a contention system. Many st stations, probably at the same time, many stations are ready to transmit their frames. But uh, which one can get the channel and have a successful transmission? That is the question. So we continue using the model of figure five. Figure five with its uh, discrete contention slots. In the contention, the basic uh, bitmap protocols is a kind of condition-free protocols. In the first condition free protocols, the basic bitmap method, bitmap is the first kind of uh, condition uh, free protocols. Uh, each contention period consists of exactly n slots. If solution zero has a frame to send, if a station zero has a frame to send, it uh, transmits a bit during the snort zero. During the snort zero, no other station is allowed to transmit during this uh, snort. Regardless, regardless of what station zero does, station one gets the opportunity to transmit a uh, one bit during snort one, but only if it has a frame width. In general, station J may announce that it has a frame to send, but inserting a one bit into snort J. That is why we call bitmap one station according to a bit, a snort, right? So after all n snorts have passed by, each station has completely knowledge of, one, of which stations wish to transmit. At that point, they begin transmitting frames in numerical order. So this figure shows the basic bitmap protocols. This is a snort one, snort one, according to station, a uh, snort zero, according to the station zero, snort zero, one, two, three, four, station zero. So, if station one, here one means station one has frame to transmit. Station three has frame to transmit. So since everyone agree on who goes next, there will never be any condition, conditions. After the last, 
after the last radio station has transmitted its frame. So in this time, three stations has frames to transmit it, right? By station transmitted by station one, station three, station seven, right? After the last radio station, is after station seven has transmitted its frames, the event, event all stations can easily monitor another n bit contention period begun is begun right so this is a term right this is a term this is a contention period this is a successful frame transmission right this is a, a term contention period and uh, several frames transmitted successfully here is a, a term right this is a contention period followed by successful frame transmitting so actually it is the uh, same with this figure right this figure five Figure five, several terms, contention period, successful frames, right? Here is frame six, contention period, followed by several frames transmitted successfully. But because of there is a contention source for each station so the frames are transmitted one by one there is no contention so uh, it is a bitmap protocols now the second kind of protocol uh, is also condition free it is called Token, token passing. Token passing is a uh, complex but interesting protocols. It passes a small message called a token. A token, a token. Token means it is a, a small message. A small message. A small message with uh, several control information at the hand. So usually, usually a frame is very large, right? Usually a frame is very large. A frame is very large. This is the uh, head of a frame. This is a. Uh, this is uh, the payload. This is a payload, payload. This is a head, right? Head. So this is a frame, right? Usually it is very long with head and a payload. But uh, there is another message uh, frame is no payload there's no payload only only head with only head so it's a very short it's a very short message right without the payload so it's used on, only for token controlling from a kind of a uh, control frame control a frame only with control information called a token from one station to the next in the same predefined order 
the token represents permission to send. Permission to send. If a station has a frame, quid for transmission when it uh, receives the token, it can send that uh, frame before it passes the token to the next station. If it has no quid frame, so if there is no frame to be ready to transmit it, it simply passes the token. So if you have a, if a station has a frame to transmit, the frame is ready, then it takes the token. It takes the token. So if a station has a frame quid, that means a frame is waiting for to be, is a, a frame quid means frame is ready to be transmitted, right? So it receives the token, the station receives the token from the system. It can send the frame before it send, passes. So that means the station receives the token, then sent the frame, then passes the, after transmitting the frame, the station passes the token to the next station. So the token means the privilege to transmit, transmit the frame, right? The token means the privilege to transmit the frame. Without a token, without the right to use the channel. So the token means the right to transmit the, with the uh, channel. So after transmitting the frame, pass the, the token to the next station and then that the next station to transmit. If there is no quid free frame, it simply pass the token. So that is the, how the token passing protocol works. In the token RAIN protocol, the topology of the network is used is used to define the order in which stations are sent. Stations are connected one to the next in the single RAIN. So usually, Token passing where token passing is a token passing is a ring, right? Is a single ring. Is a ring. The token turned in one direction, passing the token to the next station. Then simply consists of receiving the token in from one direction and transmitting it out in the other direction. Like this. It looks like this. It looks like this. It's a token RAM. It's a token. This is a station. Uh, directions of transmission. This is a token. So with the token passing, there's no condition. There's no condition to. Token bus, air bus is a, token bus is a, is a channel a kind of channel that uh, uh, multiple announce 
multiple access, multiple access through the token bus. Uh, note, note, that, uh, note that we do not need a physical RAM to implement token passing. We know token passing, pure token passing, there is uh, definitely a RAM, a RAM. But uh, if we do not need a physical RAM to implement the token passing, the channel connect the stations might instead be a single non bus, a single non bus like this, single long bus station, right? This is a station, this is a station, right? Each station then use the bus to send the token to the next station in the predefined sequence. This sequence is a logical sequence. Not, it is different from the physical ring of token passing. But uh, this is a predefined logical sequence. Possession of the token allow a station to use the bus to send one frame as before. This protocol is called token bus. It is not a rain, right? It is not a rain. No, it is not a rain, right? Not a rain. It is a bus. But uh, it can number the with one, two, dot, dot, n, right? So n, n stations. Okay, uh, that's all for today. Thank you, bye. Thank you, bye.